Hello Sigmas. Today's problem is going to be very interesting because we are going to combine our knowledge of mechanics, whatever we have learned so far and also our knowledge of kinematics and dynamics which we have learned separately. So today we are going to do some real physics. So in this problem we have this block B as you can see uh, and initially this block is held stationary while A rotates in a radius R0. These are initial conditions, which means at time t equal to zero, right? At time t equal to zero, the A block A is rotating, right? It is rotating in the circle of a radius R0 and uh, it has a angular velocity, initial angular velocity of omega equal to omega naught, right? At t equal to zero. So the question is, if I for at t equal to zero, I was holding this block B with my hands, but then if what if I release this block such that it can move downwards? What will be the acceleration of this block B? So you have to find if I call this acceleration A, then what is the acceleration of block B? Let them let me call it A sub B, right? That what that would be the acceleration of B. So you have to find that acceleration immediately after I release this block B. So you know from my previous video that before we begin solving any problem of a mechanics, all we have to do is draw the force diagram. So we have to know what are the forces on these bodies because these forces are going to be responsible for the acceleration. So what is what are the forces on B? On B, there is a force of weight in the downwards direction, and in the upwards direction there is tension. Now remember again from my previous video that I told you if the string does not change, that is if in a single string there is a single tension. But I forgot to tell you that that is true only for massless string. That is I have assumed that the string is massless. So for massless strings only, the tension throughout the string is the same. That means if this is a single string, then the tension over here would also be T, right? So the for only force on A is T. You will say that there is a force of gravity on A in the downwards direction also, right? W A, but actually that Gravity C, there is no horizontal or vertical acceleration of A. That means if I say this is the y axis, right? Actually, we are going to assume the downwards y axis, uh, the downwards direction as the positive y axis. And yes, you can choose, which is not necessary that you always consider the upward direction as positive and the downward direction as the negative y axis. It is not at all like that. Coordinate systems can change according to the problem. You can uh, choose your coordinate system conveniently depending upon what uh, the problem is, right? You can uh, choose the coordinate system according to your own convenience. But basically, I'm saying that in the y direction, if there is uh, there, the a the block a is not accelerating in the y direction although there is a force of gravity in the downward direction. So what is stopping it from moving? If there is a force uh, of gravity downwards, then it should just fall in the downward direction, right? But actually, you know from common sense that there is a table over here. There is this table, right? This table is there. So this table is going to prevent the block from falling downwards and Hence, this table is applying a equal force. From Newton's first law, you know that the net force is zero, only then the acceleration of a body is zero. So if this body is not accelerating, that means the net force on this body is zero. So if I draw separately this body A over here, then if it uh, has a force of gravity in the downward direction, but it is not accelerating, you can see. Why? Because it is kept on the table. Right, this is the table because this table is also going to apply a force 
of normal reaction that we call normal reaction on this block which would be equal to the weight of that block due to which it is not moving in the vertical direction that is in the y axis direction the block a has zero acceleration and that is only possible when the table applies a equal force on this block in the upward direction which is equal to the weight of the block such that these two force will cancel right and the net force on block a is zero and hence its net acceleration in the y direction is also zero now a quick fact that this normal reaction actually arises due to c this block would be made up of uh, atoms and atoms contain as you know electrons and protons and this table will also be made up of some atoms which also contains electrons and protons so basically this uh, the electrons and protons of this block is going to repel the electron and proton of the atoms of the table due to which there is going to be a electrostatic repulsion between these two bodies and that is the origin of normal reaction this was just for a matter of fact not connected to this problem directly but i just wanted to explain to you how normal reaction actually works right because that is also important for us to learn uh, and it would become even more important when we look into friction but for now we have ignored friction so yeah now what makes this problem very interesting is to notice that a is rotating and for rotating bodies what do we do we yes we use polar coordinates and hence for the body a we are actually going to use polar coordinates whereas for the body b we'll be using cartesian coordinates you see how depending upon which body you are looking into what is your problem and depending upon what the problem is how you can choose your coordinate system according to your own convenience and this is the problem which combines our knowledge of kinematics and mechanics whatever we have learned so far and that is what makes this problem very very interesting so as i told you this is going to be a negative y axis whereas the downward direction is going to be a positive y axis just because uh, uh, the b will mostly move uh, in the downwards direction right so b is moving downwards due to weight due to its weight that's why we assume that it is the downward direction is a positive y axis in fact it is better if we uh, if any bodies are moving in the downward direction under gravity then it is always better to choose the downward direction as the positive y axis so since uh, now we are using the polar coordinates to analyze the motion of a you know that just how we can break any vector into its uh, components in the y and x direction in polar coordinates what do we do yes we break its uh, break the motion of this body into the radial direction that is along the r cap direction and in the theta cap direction that means if a body has moved this much distance then this theta cap direction right in the theta cap direction which is perpendicular to the circle we use another pen yeah so we break the motion of this body in the r cap direction and in the theta cap direction so we are going to get minus t because i have assumed that the outward direction is a positive r cap direction so since the tension is acting in the inward direction the direction towards the center of the circle which is obviously if this is positive r cap then the opposite direction this is negative r cap right so since uh, uh, tension is working in a direction opposite to the r cap vector that's why negative t right is equal to if you did not understand this point then go and check out my video on polar coordinates the velocity and acceleration in polar coordinates right they have explained to you the polar coordinates really well so i would get ma and uh, so we are going to use this is the force is equal to mass into acceleration now here we are going to see how newton's laws of motion look in polar coordinates right so here we have mass into what is the acceleration in the radial direction 
in polar coordinates, which is r double dot minus r theta dot squared. Again, if you didn't understand how I am getting all this, go check out my video on acceleration and velocity in polar coordinates. The, that video is a prerequisite for this problem. And uh, this was uh, in the radial direction. And we have in the tangential direction, since there is, this uh, body is uh, not accelerating in the tangential direction, has acceleration zero. So that's why zero is equal to the mass of A. That is, there are no force on this body in this direction, right? In the tangential direction, there are no forces. Tension to this circle, there are no forces on A. So that force is zero in the tangential direction. And what is the acceleration in the tangential direction? R theta double dot plus 2R dot theta dot. Okay, so this was in the radial direction. And this was in the tangential direction. And now what are the forces on B? Here we are not going to use polar coordinates because B is not rotating, B is moving linearly. And hence for B, we are going to use Cartesian coordinates. So, and you can do that, you know, it's not necessary that you solve a problem only in polar coordinates or only in the Cartesian coordinates. You can use both for different bodies, obviously. Uh, so, we are going to get WB, let me call this WB, right, because weight of B, this is the weight of B. So, we are going to get WB minus T is equal to mass of B into Y double dot. Now, Y is nothing but the distance of this body from here to here, because this is the Y axis. So why is the distance of this uh, string right from the hole to the center of mass of B? So this is the distance Y. And hence you know that the acceleration is obviously going to be the double time derivative of that distance, which is Y double dot. So basically Y is nothing but the Y coordinate of B, right? If we assume that the origin is at the hole, then what do we need next? Yes, we need the constraint equation. If you do not know what the constraint equation is, just check out my previous video, right? So we need the constraint equation uh, where the length of the string is equal to, as you can see, what R, which is the radius in which the block is rotating, right? Now remember that this block is accelerating in the downwards direction, might accelerate, right? So if this block moves downwards, obviously this block is going to, A, is going to move inwards, right? So its radius is not going to remain R0, but its radius will change as the block B moves downwards. Now take a moment, close your eyes, and try to imagine how this block A is moving, right? If this block B is moving downwards, it will spiral, right? This block A is going to spiral. So just close your eyes and try to imagine how this, uh, how the trajectory of A is going to look. So L is uh, going to be equal to R, which is the radius in which block A is moving, plus Y, right? And that's why, now again, L is not changing, obviously. The length of the string is the same, so zero. I'm just going to do double time derivative uh, throughout this equation. So I will get R double dot plus Y double dot. That means R double dot is equal to minus Y double dot. And that is obvious because I've assumed the downward direction to be the positive Y. That's why if this one's acceleration is positive, but this one's acceleration would be negative because it is moving in the minus R direction. Whereas if this one's acceleration is negative, if the block B moves upwards, which is also possible, then this one's acceleration would be positive because it will be moving in the outwards direction. Again, just close your eyes and try to imagine what is happening, right? That will give you a clear sense. 
So basically, the acceleration is always going to point in the opposite direction. So let me number the equation. Let me number this one. This is the second equation. This is the third equation. And this one as the fourth equation. And then what I can do is, since I do not know what the tension in the string is, I can, uh, from equation three, I can find the tension, which is uh, T is, would be equal to WB minus MB Y double dot, right? And then substitute this T into my equation one. So put T in one, right? So if I do that, I will get minus of this. So I will get uh, minus WB plus MB Y double dot. Why minus? Because I had a minus sign over here. It would be equal to MB, uh, MA, sorry, so the MA into Y double dot, Y double dot, we have just found uh, it was into r double dot r double dot we have just found is equal to minus y double dot so we are going to get minus y double dot instead of r double dot minus r theta dot square right so uh what we are going to do is take uh, Rearrange the terms. Uh, so on rearranging, right, we should get uh, MB plus uh, MA into Y double dot would be equal to WB minus uh, MA R theta dot square. So we would get Y double dot would be equal to WB minus MA r theta dot squared divided by mb plus m i have not done anything but just open this bracket and took uh, the y double dot term on the other side so that y double dot comes common and i took wb on this side right that is all i did so we get this now here we do not know what this is so we have to use our initial conditions. So what is going to be the acceleration of block B immediately after I release it? It would be at T equal to zero. The acceleration is going to be WB minus MB. What is R at T equal to zero? R naught, it is given in the problem, I've told you. And theta dot is nothing but omega naught square divided by mb plus me and here we have found the acceleration of the block b immediately after it is uh, released at t equal to zero right and this was our problem so whether the block will rise or it is going to move in the downward direction as you can easily see from here depends entirely upon the numerator right if omega naught and in fact it depends upon omega naught completely because other things are just constant right uh, so basically if omega is very large then the block b then this term will become very large and it has a minus sign so basically the block will have a negative acceleration which means it will move in the upwards direction whereas if this term is smaller than the weight of the block B, then the block B is going to move uh, downwards, whereas the block A will move in a spiral like this. Its radius is going to decrease with time, right? So uh, this is how the motion of these blocks is going to be. And if you didn't understand this point, again, try to close your eyes and try to imagine this or rewatch the video. Just uh, watch what I've said again, and that will give you a clear understanding of what is actually happening. So you see how this problem was so interesting because we have combined our knowledge of mechanics, whatever we have learned in kinematics, dynamics so far.
and that makes this problem really interesting. And to motivate me to create more such interesting videos, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Uh, we are all done with, uh, we found what we wanted. So we are done with this video. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.